actually lives in that realm Mm -hmm. for all we know oh okay yeah (laughs) like there's so many things there that kind of it it was hard to believe but because they didn't actually answer like how did you survive there's so many possible answers that they could go with that can end up being believable so it's not like they end up saving the avengers and half the universe yep that too (laughs) so janet could possibly have like knowledge or information that might be useful but sort of jumping back to the beginning how did we feel about the introduction to the wasp um i mean i liked i mean you know obviously with there were some comments that you see on the internet with the first ant-man and you know they're saying that you know if if hope if hope was a much better fighter and much more qualified to you know do all of the stuff that hank wanted her to do why pick scott and i think for me it was my defense in that is that you know Hank already lost his wife like does he really want to lose his daughter so he wanted someone who was expendable and in that case that's why he brought Scott along and I know that like you know she was obviously very upset about that but you know it it really hopefully for her kind of showed her that you know her dad really cared about her and like didn't want anything bad to happen to her and For him, too, it was also, you know what, I need to trust my daughter. I know that she can do this. I know that she's brilliant and stuff. So once he finally got to get over, like, you know, all of that stuff and, you know, have hope shine as the wasp, I think, you know, it really, yeah, like, it was really great. And she she kicked ass. My favorite scene was the kitchen fight scene. That was a pretty damn good scene. That was an amazing scene. I honestly think that that was the best introductory scene for any hero i mean we all knew that you know hope was cool and she was a badass but to see her kind of don the suit and actually just go full out with it was honestly amazing and you know she kind of put black widow to shame in some ways uh okay so i i talked to you about this before off air Mm -hmm. but um i felt that she had kind of a copy pasta personality in that okay black widow uh wasp gamora um, etc. Oh, Domino. They all—they're uh, all like strong women who are mostly serious, but a little bit, a uh, little bit funny. Who know what they're doing and in an ass-kicking way, but like you know, and, and then just like little tweaks of personality right there. But there's so much vastness and difference of characters between like Chris Pratt, uh, sorry, Star Lord versus Tony Stark versus Captain America. Yeah, like, that's, a, would... actually, that's a really valid critique. I mean, I saw Wasp as more of a badass in the sense of, like, her ability to fight. Like, I thought mm-hmm. she was a lot more interesting than watching Black Widow. And, and I feel like Black Widow, they've kind of gotten repetitious with her, the way she moves and stuff like that. Yeah. Like that weird windmill leg thing that she always does. That she always <laughs> does, yeah, pretty much. But, yeah, I kind of agree with you. I think yeah. outside of the women of Wakanda, all of the other women in the Marvel Universe are just very one note. Yeah, it feels like... <laughs> Uh, Brie Larson will probably bring something different with the Captain Marvel movie as long as and I'll enjoy that as long as it doesn't turn into a, like a hey 90s kids kind of cringe fest mm-hmm. yeah no remember I remember Rugrats how about Backstreet Boys what about Push Pops Tamagotchis <laughs> Tamagotchis I'll, I'll literally leave that theater if that's all it is <laughs> ready player one but for 90s kids stuff I can go into a whole thing Hopefully not. I mean, with the Wasp, the really nice thing to see was and the fact that she honestly outdoes Ant-Man in some ways. Like, she, oh, yeah. She's definitely way more of a brutal fighter. She's much more quicker to using like her her blasters and her little arsenal with her. And even just how she changes size and shape mm-hmm. is a lot more versatile. And, and she flies. And then she flies, which is pretty amazing. But... That, I think, to me, is what makes Ant-Man and the Wasp work so well, is the fact that she's not his sidekick mm-hmm. or his side chick. She's, like, his equal, if yeah. not his better in a lot of ways. Yeah. What I find really great, too, is that um, you haven't seen a du- duo like this since Captain America and Peggy Carter. I mean, you have, like, Tony and Pepper, and they're a great couple, and you have Jane and Thor, and they're a great couple. But, you know, they're very much a couple. It's not really a partnership, whereas mm-hmm. Ant-Man and Wasp, you really see kind of the, the relationship and partnership that they have and how well they work together. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of refreshing to kind of see that and, like, you know, have them be romantic, but at the same time also be, you know, 
really just relying on each other to just you know have the other person be there for for the other so yeah yeah they're like they're both con- uh, competent people which yeah. is really cool about their dynamic versus uh, I'm, I don't know how how confident was Pepper with like that suit. <laughs> she didn't get to don it much, but you're uh-huh. right. Like I think when it came when it comes to showing true partnership, we don't really we didn't really see that. Even if you look at Black Widow, like oftentimes she gets sidelined a lot for the rest of the Avengers, and mm-hmm. then we just get a lot of gratuitous Scarlett Johansson's butt what? <laughs> shots everywhere. Who's and... about that? <laughs> <laughs> That's Sorry. what the tight suit Sorry. is for. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I mean, you Cyril's don't see this, Cyril. Dead Jeff the Death Glare right now. <laughs> it's fine. Listen, this is not just Ass League, okay? Ass <laughs> <laughs> League, yes. It's the inside joke for Justice League that we have. Um, but just but even if you look at Gamora, oh, just last week, no, <laughs> just got it. Oh, I got it. But like going back to Gamora and like Mantis, even they are never shown kind of in their true potential mm-hmm. and their mm. true abilities. Maybe Nebula gets a bit more of like the the badassness because she's her so she's a solo act. But even Gamora is often just being the one there to support Peter and his feelings. Like mm-hmm. oh, Peter. You're having an emo moment. Let me just tell you not to be emo or let me be here to listen to you. So it was nice to see, like, Scott taking direction from Hope. Mm -hmm. Wait, 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 wait. What about Valkyrie and Thor? Oh, they're not really a couple, but... They're not really a couple, but they are a really great partnership. And, I mean, again, it's one of those things where um, we didn't see enough of Valkyrie, in my opinion. I definitely would have wanted to see more of, you know, kind of her, how, how, like, how she fits into that that kind of world that Thor Thor's in. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, like I think because we already knew Hope from the first movie, it was great to kind of see that evolution mm-hmm. and kind of see how she, you know, she is Scott's partner. Like yeah. this we're we're in this together. We got each other's backs. And I don't know if I'm the only one that noticed this. I could be, and it might just be because I really like Paul Rudd and he's just super dorky and but like do you guys did you guys notice that he was a little bit more dumbed down in this one. Mm. I think just when they were talking about, like, you know, the quantum realm and, and physics and stuff, he was kind of like, yeah, let me pretend I know what that means and stuff, And which is weird because, um, like, you know, Scott Lang had a master's in electrical engineering. The reason why he went to jail yeah. in the first place was because, you know, his old company was doing a lot of bad stuff and he decided to be the whistleblower and expose them for it and it was just i'm you know obviously not saying that just because you have a master's in electrical engineering you know everything about science but you know i feel like do we need to dumb down a male character just so we can prop up a female character i don't know in that scene i felt like man i can relate a bit or more like Man, I don't understand what these guys are saying. It's either it's legit or more likely you're just throwing random science words in front of me. Yeah, I, I feel like I didn't get the impression that he was dumbed down as much as it was he, he was just meant to be kind of more of that comic relief in that situation. And it's just like, oh, you know, you guys are talking about some like really hardcore science stuff and I'm not... I'm not science guy. I'm not the science guy. Like, I'm not quite guy. there. And But it wasn't... I never got the impression that Scott was dumbed down if anything i got the impression that scott's per- like in a sense his priorities really changed and i like the fact that a lot of the story was sort of focused on you know the rem- the ramifications of his one decision he was just mm. like yeah cap needs my help and he goes and helps but ends up screwing over like everyone that was important to him in his life mm-hmm. so i i did like that they touched on that and like the fact that he was under house arrest for two years and the fact that you know he hope and hank were on the run because he went and did that without telling them, so... That confused me a bit, <laughs> that time jump. Uh, like, before they hit that scene explaining everything that happened in between, it's like, oh, we hate you now, and also, like, you're under a house arrest and stuff. I'm just like, wait, what happened at the la- at the end of the last movie? Yeah, because we so all... I'm so much trouble right now. Because we all kind of forgot, oh, yeah, he was in Civil War, right? That yeah. Happened. Well, like... still, it's just like, what else happened? <laughs> Why do they hate each other? Now we know, but, like, you know, there was a good amount of time. It's just like... I'm so dumb right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in in terms of that, like b- the film did focus a lot on like father daughter dynamics. So how did we feel about that? Were they able to evoke emotions from us? I don't know. I've never been a daughter before. <laughs> <laughs> but you might be a father one day. Oh, oh. <laughs> April, if you're listening, 
Comicsync.ca, subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought it was I thought it was really cool because I mean there was a lot of father daughter dynamics going on. I mean the, obviously the um, you know you had Hope and Hank, um, and then you had Cassie and Scott, and then you also had. Ava, um, who plays Ghost, or who is Ghost, and Bill Forster, and that was more of, I guess, like a adoptive father daughter relationship, but still mm-hmm. very much, you know, within that kind of same realm and stuff. And it was it was really cool, and it, it's really c- great to see like that type of father daughter dynamic. Like if my dad ever built me like a super cool maze with a giant ant to just you know. I was a little jelly of that. <laughs> it's so, like it's so cool, and yeah. it's just like the amount of time it took, like the amount of bonding time it took for them to also build and create that. It was just, it was really awesome, and it's it's always really refreshing to see when when dads always encourage their daughters to be to be badass and to you know be like the super cool like chicks that they are. So and actually, you know, t- openly talk about their adventures rather than like I have a secret and I'm keeping it away from you. Yeah, yeah. like it was. It's, it was you. definitely really great to see Cassie have like insight into her dad being Ant Man and the fact that despite how young she is, Scott still sees her as a source of like I can confide in you and like tell you how I feel in the context that you'll understand. Mm-hmm. And you know, Cassie being able to give him that kind of child like insight and knowledge from her I guess sense of innocence and wonder at the fact that her dad's at man and I just I love the scene where she gets disappointed that she's not his like partner and it's mm. hope because it's like she wanted to be a hero too which I thought was really cute and like it's a good callback <laughs> it really is in the comics where she is a superhero and then she dies mm-hmm. thanks for that <laughs> oh and she came back to life obviously <laughs> obviously it's comics everyone comes. everyone but dies kind of touching on um ghost or Ava and um, Bill. What did we think of Ghost as? I guess she was sort of the big villain in this film. It was but... like two villains, and they were both like half villains. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think like for her, she has a really good parallel with Killmonger. I think in that they had really good intentions, but they had very bad execution. You know, and it's just it's one of those things where, for her, she, you know, she was in pain. You know, it, she just she just wanted it to go away, and I get I get it. You know, with that point where it gets so bad to the point where you're just desperate for any sort of solution that yeah. you go to such lengths. So, I mean, she's a villain in the sense that, like, yeah, she was kind of the main you know mm-hmm. antagonist of the of the film, but at the same time, you know, you really understood kind of her viewpoint as well yeah and yeah, i definitely thought that she was a great villain in the sense that you know we had vulture who we knew had a family that loved him but they didn't know what he did in his downtime you know for money being back and then we had killmonger who had a backstory that was tragic but we didn't actually see anybody like present in his life mm-hmm. and then the thing i liked about ava was Bill knew what she was and what she did working, you know, as an agent for S.H.I.E.L.D., a.k.a. HYDRA, um, and knew that she was capable of doing evil and quite bad things, but he still cared about her. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we still saw the lengths that he was going to try to save her. So I thought that helped add a lot of humanity to her Mm -hmm. character and made her a little bit like someone that I could feel like empathy for. Yeah, Yeah, I especially liked when... The fact that he has a line and he draws it, even though her life is on the line, we will find another way. And she listens. Usually that's the point. Mm-hmm. I was expecting it's like, no, it hurts too much. And then like stabs him and he goes like, oh, I see what you mean. Uh, and then <laughs> dies. You no, know. yeah. She she had the capability of change. And like, yeah. you know, especially I liked at the end of like the film, they kind of hinted that, you know, she has some kind of working relationship at least with Ant-Man and the rest of them Mm -hmm. like they're trying to help her so I definitely like the fact that she wasn't the conventional villain I must destroy you all yeah and like there was something there and like you could definitely see more of that character down the line that's what I meant when um when I said it's like there's two halves of villains because there's one villain that's absolutely evil but not capable one villain that's absolutely capable but not quite evil you put them both together you have a typical Marvel villain. <laughs> oh, it, made you know for, what I mean? it made for a fun story. I think. Oh yeah, it did. Um, and just kind of going off with other characters, what did we think of 
Good old Louise. I love him. Just <laughs> protect fun. Michael Pena at all costs. He's just, it was a, like the truth serum scene was so funny because it was just, 